Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and here I am recording this on the 9th of December 2020. Now of course as we get to the 9th of December this is the time when the daylight hours stop from getting earlier despite the fact that we still have a few days we still have somewhere like 12 days to go until the shortest day winter solstice the evening sunset time stays pretty much the same and actually starts to get later by the time we get to day nine right but the morning is what gets shorter uh just for the next 12 days um that's kind of how it works so this is uh, quite cool it does mean that i don't have to worry about the evenings getting any earlier now um which is good for these videos now because all i know is that either it's going to stay the same or it's going to get later so here i am out in one of my favorite um, locations in Dartmoor and as you can see it looks quite Lord of the Ringsy now of course I do need one of my other hands one of my other hands I've only got two not like Ganesh my other hand I mean so that I can do that go up and go down so you can see this area it's very nice but there is just as much up and down there as there is side by side that I need to do so I hope you're not getting too dizzy with all this perspective man stuff here we go right so i thought oh, maybe i should just uh yeah carry on going for a walk now um uh, yes what i will do is apologize for our um what is it the righteous indignation stroke anger that i felt um that i had to express in my last video occasionally i get like that and of course fair enough it's understandable that this would happen these days is it not but I don't like feeling like this for very long. I used to know someone who was always angry and he would always be self-justifying, you know, the, the anger, like righteous anger. Yes, it's right to feel angry about this because this anger is righteous. And I knew someone like that. They were always angry. They were the most, one of the most high maintenance, exhausting, draining, fucking traumatizing people you'd ever have, wish to have in your life. Good riddance, right? Really, seriously. I know that feeling of righteous anger and I felt it the other day. But at the same time, I know that when you get that feeling, you know, it's not good. It's not good to keep it. You've got to be able to contain it and you've got to be able to find, um, you know, you've got to be able to come back from it. Because, you know, yes, sometimes the anger is righteous and sometimes the feeling of anger that you feel is for the right reasons. And sometimes, ultimately, at a higher level, that feeling of righteous anger is motivated by love, love of freedom. Um, you know in this case but at the same time you know that this feeling will outstay its welcome because the more it's there the more it blinds you of reason the more it takes you away from those nice positive feelings that you can feel that sometimes it's important to go back to well actually it was always important to go back to those feelings just feeling good makes you feel healthy so yes um, the reason why um, I'm making this video about something other than that today is because it occurs to me as I reach the first and then into the second week of December this vibe this vibe comes over me overcomes me and I'm trying to understand what this vibe is right um, separate of culture this vibe is that thing that happens on the inside in our own inner realms if you know what would the, what would the shamans say what would the shamans say if you asked them they would feel something on the inside they would feel a feeling like an inner realm, an in, inside yourself realm that you're projecting onto the outside. And they would, they would say, oh, this is what you think the Christmas spirit is. Right. And so um, when it comes to uh, Christmas music, when it comes to that shh, 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 percussion that you always hear a lot of the time, you know, in uh, Christmas songs, when it comes to some of the artifacts as well, like, you know, holly and ivy and i was just thinking that actually about that old hymn which is a bit more pagan just done um, you know pagan but only paying sort of homage to christianity that the holly and the ivy they're not singing about um bethlehem they're not singing much about jesus most of the focus is on the trees that produce berries and leaves in the winter time right yeah it's kind of like a pagan song about the english countryside in the winter that's kind of what i always think that this is what it's all about and so as a result you go back to the pagan roots of it all and you think right this was the original christmas it was pagan the original yuletide what did the people um when they didn't have the kind of pop culture the recorded recordable pop culture that we have now right um what do they feel because up here in the northern parts of the world as we were approaching 
Christmas and or you were approaching winter solstice, right? Um, this feeling of enchantment, which is the only way I can describe it, this magical feeling which I feel on the inside today, which I kind of think is a bit like um, what tripping would be like if we produced our own endogenous mescaline, right? That's kind of how I describe it. It's my, my whole body chemistry reacts to going into December in this way. And I know that this is, must be a kind of a group hallucination. And this group hallucination of our body chemistry feeling this way is what br brings about that magical feeling that has brought about Yuletide, which then morphed into Christmas as time went by. Which is why, um, you know, we think of uh, the music having those sounds in them, you know. Um, the sort of jingly tinsely bell sounds why um, we the focus would be on the remaining leaves that you, you only get like holly and ivy and berries and you know the red berries and stuff like that the robin the, um, which of course is one of our indigenous um, birds that's, that doesn't migrate stays here in the winter the robin all these things are artifacts of things that enchant us when the light has gone when the sun has gone and I describe this feeling as being like um, like um, my inner realms are producing a summer they're producing a summer of their own to make up for the absence of summer in the outer realms and um, I always get this feeling as we get into uh, December and um, so this is one of the reasons why I did end up thinking to myself well yeah all right fair enough I don't really want to go along with the mainstream Christmas I never really have felt like I wanted to go along with the mainstream Christmas but at the same time, um, one thing I don't want to ignore is that feeling of enchantment. I wish to reclaim it back from culture to some degree or other. But hey, this is something I do feel is a very important thing to talk about today because it is one of, I think of it as being one of the unconfiscatable freedoms, right? Now, we're going through this lurgy lockdown thing. We're going through this time where all our authorities have uh, got a little bit too much of a taste for power. It feels like the world is going through some sort of covert coup. The normies are not really helping. They're a little bit too complicit. They're allowing this to happen around us. It's not a very nice um, thing to feel. It's not a nice thing to be on the receiving end of, really. You know? um, however, our inner realms, they're freedoms that we feel within ourselves. You could incarcerate us, lock us up in solitary confinement, whatever. You could, you could do all these things to us. There's certain things that happen on the inside, right, that we feel, that we sense um, the, in the esoteric, in the magical world, in the imaginal places that don't exist on the outside, except that our perception might flavour the external with it, right? And I think of these feelings as like being the unconfiscatable freedoms. And that's why I say, if you were to um, explain um, the lockdown to the, the shamans, the shamans, what would they say? They probably would say, well, if you can't find freedom without, then find freedom within, you know? And if you are trying to fight for the freedom within, um, if you are, sorry, trying to fight for the freedom without, right? then you really don't want to be like Antifa. You don't want to be like um, the social justice warriors. You don't want to be like any of these people. And the reason why is they're all soulless, aren't they? They've all got soul death. They've all got dead eyes, right? These are the people who their whole reason for being is that of oppression, right? If they didn't have oppression, and if they couldn't make oppression um, the, and everyone else to blame for their oppression as being their only reason to exist, right? Um, they wouldn't be able to exist at all. So you've got to be different, completely opposite, shall we say, of these social justice warrior types or these Antifa types. You've got to realise that, like, yeah, there are levels of freedom that can be taken away from us. But in order for us to wrest those freedoms back from power-mad governments, right, going around like a bunch of soul-dead, destructive, nihilistic um, people with dead eyes, like the way the Antifa or like the social justice warriors do or like Black Lives Matter do or you know, any of these people like the Greta Thunbergs of this world, right? these sort of already in a post-apocalyptic realm, aren't they? They're already there, man, you know? No, we have to get the unconfiscatable freedoms that, we f that, that the authorities and the people outside us cannot take away from us. 
no matter what they do, they can lock us up. But they can't take away the fact that we can, maybe with meditation or with yoga or with, um, I don't know, even, even if it's just something spontaneous because we've retreated into our imaginations or whatever, there are certain things that cannot be taken away from us. And the most incarcerated physical form can feel like the freest person on the inside. Now, the one thing is that we must do, I think we must do this, is access that feeling. It's good for your morale to feel that way, is it not? Because if you can feel that feeling within and you know that they can't take that away from you, then that is a good place to start as we then attempt to rest back the freedoms that they can take from us, right? They cannot take um, away from us if we wish that we're going to make, our, make ourselves happy, make ourselves balanced, make ourselves centred, you know, and keep ourselves stoic and keep ourselves as much in control of ourselves as we possibly can. Now, of course, I might have the odd day where I lose control, like I did the other day. I could beat myself up over that if I wish to, but no, I decided, no, well, I'm human, man. I'm going to slip occasionally, right? And so be it, I'll slip. And then I'll, I'll try to come back from that slippage. That's the thing to do. Come back from that slippage. And then, you know, when um, something happens, like today, I just felt this feeling of enchantment. And I tell you, when I look around at the um, nature around me now, now I know it, you could say that that looks quite bleak, you could say that looks bleak, you could say it looks bland, but I don't know, man. I feel that, I feel that this magical feeling, this, this uh, what I call it, this thing that is going on inside me that I'm feeling today um, is somehow um, giving me some sort of externalizing perceptual filter that I'm experiencing everything through. And it's allowing me to project a magical, mystical, winter wonderland-like perceptual um, was it interpretation of what I'm seeing onto the trees, onto nature itself. And I do think, actually, that despite the fact that it doesn't quite look as nice as it does in the summer, one of the good things, though, is that when you stand under nature and you stand under trees, even when the trees don't have leaves on them, and you see the kind of kaleidoscopic, fractal, you know, nature of the trees and how they branch off like that and how self-similar everything is amongst uh, across scale because you know um, if you were looking um, from above down below and you see that the way rivers jut out from valleys and stuff like that you see a similar type of um, similar type of patterns is it like Fibonacci or whatever golden ratio that sort of thing yeah nature always seems to know to do this right and um, so this is something that I feel that we have to find within ourselves. I get this in October sometimes when autumn kicks in, right? A nice sort of uh, boost as we transition from one season to the next. The next time I feel this is in December as we are now, that feeling that we got to know as the Christmas spirit, right? As we approach uh, winter solstice and then into the new year. January and February often feel a bit dull for me, but... But then, as we approach spring and the smells of spring and the first open buds and the first green shoots that you see, um, that combination alters my mind as well. And I love it as we go from one to another to another. Now, of course, one day I probably um, won't be much in the temperate climate anymore. One day I'll probably be in the tropics. And um, although I love the tropics and I would love to be able to escape... Um, and go there, you know, this winter. I'm not going to be able to, um, you know. I'm going to make sure that I can travel next year. I'm absolutely bloody going to make sure I can. But I can't go where I would like to go this January. So it looks like um, I'll have to have my first winter here, uh, you know, my first uninterrupted winter here in years. I think it was the end of 2017 into the beginning of 2018. I think that was the last winter. So when is that? No, actually, I think it might have been even later than that. No, it was that, actually. It was. It was. That was the last time that I was, uh, you know... So, good while back, since I've had an uninterrupted winter. Um, I'll have to see it through then this time. Well, I actually feel good about the fact that the days are only going to be getting shorter 
for the next 12 days and then that's over. I'm also happy about the fact that the days are no longer getting shorter in the evening. They're only getting shorter in the morning now. Um, I'm happy about that too. I think that is great. Yeah. So they're only getting half short now because they're only happening at one time of the day. <laughs> yes, I think that's really good. And yes, of course, when I do, um, you know, I say if and when, I hope it's when and when I go um, to the tropics and spend more time there and don't spend time in the, in the, uh, what was it, the temperate zone. I hope that it won't be monotonous. I'm hoping that this constant being surrounded by coconut trees and pineapples and bananas and mango trees and, you know, all those lovely evergreen acacia trees that you see out there, etc. I'm hoping, right, that, uh, that that will uh, be enjoyable but in a different way to the way that the temperate zone is. And I'm hoping that there will be seasonal changes that I'll be able to spot there, despite that the temperature will always be the same as it is all year round, right? Um, nevertheless, wherever I am in nature, wherever I tap into in nature, nature is always unconditionally, enchantingly beautiful wherever you go, right? And so, occasionally, um, I have to remind myself of that. I have to remind myself, yeah, yeah, that um, it's the forces of nature that cause these changes, right? Um, that cause the, uh, what they call it, that cause that feeling, the kind of Christmas solstice yuletide spirit feeling to exist in the first place, that cause these festivals to exist. It's the forces of nature and the tilt of the earth at certain times of the year that cause us to go there, you know? And that's one of the things that we've got to remember. Nature knows more than we can possibly imagine. Hold on, I've got to do this because I've got to go down there. Um, I hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to see. Um, I think it doesn't really look that good, but if I zoom around here, you'll be able to see. I love the way you've got this kind of combination of ferns because of the mildness of our winters here in Devon, right? You've got the ferns on the ground that give it a kind of exotic, almost somewhat subtropical look. I like the fact that because it's deciduous tree territory, you've got these skeletal trees. Um, and I like the way you've got this kind of, yeah, mixtures of greens and browns. It's, uh, it's a very anomalous climate that we have here, you know, and I like it. It gets wintry enough for you to feel Christmassy, but it's mild enough here, right, um, that it's got a slight tinge of the, uh, the subtropical and the exotic about it too. It's like nowhere else in the world in that way. Right, so this has been somewhat of a long-winded video. Um, but nevertheless, I hope it has been an inspiring one, right? Uh, because I think uh, we need, I share nature, you know, I share nature um, as best I can here in this digital realm that you will find yourselves in as best I can, because I think it's good for people to see it. And I try, as I say, to channel and emit um, the natural forces that I feel for my own esoteric world outwards too, because I kind of think that this is something that isn't done enough at the moment, you know? Um, and I urge as many people as possible to go and connect yourself with the forces of nature as much as you possibly can. Because it will take you away from the digital world, it will take you away from the human bullshit. That's the most important thing. There's too much human bullshit and there's too many of these bad ones and zeros, <laughs> you know? You need re-analoguing sometimes. You know, and with me, well, I'm one of these people who, just as I skate between the outer world and the inner world, right, um, that's kind of one shamanic level that I'm on. The other shamanic level that I find myself on is how I always manage to skirt between the digital and the analog too, because I think that that is just as much of, um, of a transitional line that's good to be on both sides, boundary conditions where one meets the other. You know, like land and sea, like air and water, like, um, you know, like outside and inside, like analog and digital. Yeah, where well, you can stand on one and you can witness the other. That's where the magic is. Right, anyway, time for me to toddle off and put all this stuff away. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. 
Also, check out our new merchandise stores where you can find T-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Links in the show notes below, as well as the links to all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, etc. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.